Hey everybody, welcome to Excel Video 366. I'm Nate Moore. I've been helping a group that has a patient satisfaction survey. They've set out a bunch of them, now they want to keep track of them, tabulate them, understand them, pivot it, all that good stuff. So I wrote a custom database for them in Access. Now we're going to analyze the data in Excel. When you're ready to look at custom data in your practice, let's talk. Remember last time we used this formula to sum if is error and get rid of NAs so we could get a total and ignore the NAs. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say, now I want an average to ignore the NAs. And that's not so bad. Equals average if is error. This group here. And then if that's an error, what do we want to do? Well, let's put quotes in there and leave it blank. If it's not an error, let's go add these guys up. So that'll finish the if, that'll finish the average function, control shift enter, 48.25. The other way to attack this problem is to do this. You can do equals average if is error, same thing, C2 to C6. But now what I'm going to do is, whoops, finish that. If there's an error, I'm going to put a zero there. If there's not an error, C2 to C6, finish the if, finish the average, control, shift, enter. Now, let me help you understand why I've got two different numbers here. Here I said, give me the average. If it's an error, make it blank. Here I said, give me the average. If it's an error, make it zero. So I've got the same total here both ways. This 48.25 is the total divided by 4 because it's ignoring this Dr. Russell because Dr. Russell's an error and it's going to put a blank there. The average formula will ignore that blank. Here, I said if there's an error, put a 0 there. So the average formula says, ah, oh, now I got a 0. I got a fifth number. So I'm going to take this same total here and divide by 5 here instead of divide by 4 there. And as a result, this number is a lot lower. Just make sure you know what you want to do with errors. If you want to not include the error in the average, Write the formula like this and say if there's an error, leave it blank. If you do want to include a zero in the average or you want to include some other number instead of zero, write the formula if is error and put that other number right here where the zero is and you can control what happens when there's an error. One more trick in today's video. Let's count the number of errors that there are. So what we're going to do is we're going to sum this time. If is error. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say here is the value I want to check for an error. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a 1 there. And I, I really don't care if it's false. I could put a comma 0 if it's false, but I really don't care if it's false. I'm going to finish the if, finish the sum, control, shift, enter, and there's one error there. And if I did, let's say, equals 24 divided by 0, now there's two errors. If I get rid of this and turn it back, now there's one error. You see how I used that to count the errors? If there's an error, give me a 1, and then I'll just sum those 1s, and then Control-Shift-Enter will look at that across the entire array, sum every time there's an error, and give me the answer I want. A couple of clever tricks to use arrays to keep track of numbers when you've got errors or zeros or stuff you don't want in there. I've got another idea along the same line, and I'll show that to you in the next Excel video. Thanks for watching.